Uh, we know the kids are itching to get up here, so we're just going to have them come up and sing. All you kids going to come up and sing. And all you that are visitors, you got you kids are more than welcome to come up. Then come on up. Aren't we thankful to have all these group of kids? I'm telling you, our church just keeps growing. That's what we're thankful for. All right, we got a young man that's going to tell us a Bible verse. So uh, let's just give him our attention here, and he's going to give us one. Psalms 23, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in the green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Good job, good job. Thankful for what our uh, our teachers are doing to our kids. And don't ever forget, that is the most important job that you can do, is teaching our kids the Word of God, and we are so thankful for that. All right, at this time, we're going to go ahead and have Jeff Dickens come, come on up. We are so glad to have him this morning. At this time, let's worship God this morning. I know that our church has been taking a hit. We've, we've lost some good men here, and uh, we know that it can be depressing, but God is still on the throne. And some of us are looking at this world right now, and everything, you just seem, you're just thinking everything's just falling apart. But us, if we read our Bibles, we would think everything has fallen into place. People, Jesus is coming back. And I believe it's going to be soon. If you're not ready today, you can be ready right now. Jeff Dickens, we're so thankful that you're here this morning, buddy. Let's just worship him today. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you. I appreciate the call from Caleb to come and worship with you this morning. That's what we need to do. Amen. We're here to worship God. So let's do it. Amen. For me, we back on Calvary, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power.
It soothes all my doubts And calms my fears And it tries It tries all of my tears It's the blood that gives me strength From day to day From the road that you're on But he'll find you right there Trust me, I've been there Oh, what a difference he made in me Because of the blood I'm forgiven and free Everything changed the moment His mercy found me Found me Now every sin has been traded for grace Love came and washed away every stain. I'll testify over and over again how lost I was, how saved I am. I'm praising my Savior. 
This is my story. Yes, this is my song. Oh, what a difference he made in me. Because of the blood, I'm forgiven and free. Everything changed the moment his mercy found me. Found me. Now every sin has been traded for grace. Love came. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. What a difference he's made in my life. He can do the same for you. Amen. I'm glad this morning I put my trust and hope in Jesus. Amen. this morning all my hope is in Jesus Just breaks a man, breaks him down to his knees. <laughs> but God, I've been broken more than a time or two. You know what? But you pick me up and you show me what it means to be a man. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on. All my hope is in Jesus. Praise for it. All my hope is. 
his precious blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that blood that was shed on Calvary. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's an honor and privilege to be here, as I said, and um, I know it's been rough on you this week and having the loss of Mike, and, and uh, I didn't get to know him that well, but I've come here a few times and got to meet him, and, and uh, it's a big miss, and uh, I remember when my dad passed away in 2021, uh, he got saved at his bedside at the age of 80. You never know when it's your time, and, and he, got, he got his chance to repent of his sins, and I'm thankful for that, and, uh, and it's been just a, a song came to mind. As soon as he passed away, that God's still good through it all. No matter what's going on through this week, God's still good. Amen. And we should be thankful God's been good in our lives. Amen. Because he was so good to Mike too. Amen. And he'd say the same thing this morning, I believe, that God's been good in his life. And we know where he is, but I know I love this song right here. And when I heard the song after my dad passed away, I realized that he didn't have to save my dad, but he did that. And that's the goodness of God. Amen. And he can save you this morning. And that's the goodness of God. Amen. Like he saved me, Tom. Praise the Lord. Amen. You all know this song, so it's a worship and praise song, but I love it. So let's worship and praise the Lord, because he's been good to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Ain't God been good to you? He's been good to me. Yes. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, church. goodness and his grace. Come on, sing it. All my life you have been faithful. Woo. All my life you have been so, so good. 
Rejoicing and healing, amen. We need it this morning. Here's a this is a song that came to mind that uh, maybe what we need this morning, right? Here. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> I'm a traveler far from home, and I get lost. I press on <laughs> Cause there's a mansion in Streets of gold Where I belong mm. Yes, there's a day Coming soon will be made new and heaven's glory will shine like the morning before our eyes when we all see Jesus And no more madness And no more pain When we all When we all See Jesus Face to face And then we will see with angel voices and there will be a great rejoicing holy holy worthy worthy is the One who 
saved me by His grace. When He takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day. Praise the Lord. Love you all. God bless. Well, I feel like I've been to church. <laughs> God's been here this morning, hasn't he? Thank the Lord. Appreciate the presence of God. And I appreciate all of you. I want to I wanna say, I know Tyson mentioned the girls and all that they done and the ones that helped them Wednesday night. And of course, Scott and them had the hay ride ready and all that and was wonderful for the kids. A lot of kids from the community came in and was part of it, and we thank the Lord for that. But uh, and we do want to thank you for your prayers, not only for Mike's family, but for me this week. And uh, I can't explain it to you until you've been there and experienced it. It is. Uh, I was talking to Shelley, and she said, "I've never heard Shelley or Tate either one do any better job singing than they done." At the funeral, great, just done a great job and just beautiful. But uh, Shelly said, I, I don't even remember it, you know, after she started singing. And that's how God does. When people pray, you know, I can't explain it, but he just, he just circles around us and, and, and you don't, a lot of times you don't even realize, you know, what you did say or do. So we just thank God for his presence and how he honored our buddy. And I realize today that uh, of course America we're in a crisis I, I, got, I get that and you all know that I'm not talking about the stock market or uh, nearly not really even the economy and stuff so bad I know we're, we're living a time when inflation's out of hand and people working two and three jobs to try to live and I get all that uh, a guy used to tell me my dad one time Dave it was Dave Burton went up to get some truck parts. Dad said, you're welcome to anything I got. If I don't have it, I'll show you how to get along without it. <laughs> and that was kind of one of his sayings. And that's how he raised us. If you don't have it, you just get along without it. And uh, I think that's a lot of what's happened to America. We don't want to get along without it. We go ahead and buy it when we really can't afford it. Then we get ourselves in trouble. So... Uh, that's not the message today, but I, we are, I get that, we're in a crisis. And uh, you know, uh, Beach Fork, we're in a, a bit of a crisis here ourselves. You say you look around, a wonderful crowd, what are you talking about? Well, I, I, I do appreciate all of you being here, first of all, today, and I know, but here's the thing, we have lost some saints of God out of this church, and uh, 
you know, we've lost four of our deacons. James Ray Brown was our oldest deacon, and then my dad. And then we lost Jim uh, Allen, and now Brother Mike. And you don't just pick guys like this off the street to do what these guys done and, and the faithfulness that they showed to this church, the love they had for this church, the dedication they had to this church. And they gave of their time. They was here every service. They gave of their treasure. They paid their tithings. And more than that, these guys were the ones when we needed something extra for something, they was the first ones to chip in. And, and I realize we still got some good ones. Brother Freddie's one of them too that's been here all these years and has, has stood with us and helped keep. We got what we got here today because of the people I just mentioned, partly. Uh, a, a big part of it, they were. And uh, you know, I always say this. You let me look at your checkbook for a minute and I'll find out where your heart's at. And I'm not up here looking for anything from you, okay? For as far as offering, but I'm just telling you this. That's how you find out where people's hearts at a lot of times. And I know that there's been a lot of things come our way in this country. Uh, we've had a pandemic that we came through and you know it messed up society a whole lot more than we want to ever admit to. Do you realize that shutting people up and shutting things down and the things that we've done, and you can blame it on whoever you want to, I blame it on Satan. Because he used a bad thing to try to destroy a lot of churches, a lot of families, a lot of people in America. Kids are still suffering today because they weren't in school and they got behind and a lot of them's never caught up. A lot of them just don't want to go to school now because they got used to sitting at home and looking at a computer screen. So it's messed up a lot more. And families, a lot of families are in a crisis. Some families right here in this church are in a crisis today. And the enemy's doing all he can to try to destroy you and your family today. But you know what? When our uh, car goes down, breaks down, what do you do? Now today, I mean, it used to be we could park it under a shade tree and work on it ourselves. A lot of us could. But today, the cars and stuff we got, if you don't have a computer to hook up to it, you're done. You're not going to work on it. You want to be able to even diagnose a thing. We take our car to a mechanic. Yeah. Something goes wrong with our house, you try to find somebody, unless you're Monty Warren, and he'll try to fix it, whether he knows how or not. He'll try to patch it up. I mean, that, that guy's going to try to fix it. But most of us, if we don't know what we're doing, we just call the professional to come in. If I need a roof, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to put it on. I'm sorry, but I'm going to hire somebody who knows what they're doing to try to come and put that roof on. But here's the thing. When your life's in a crisis, who do you go to? Who do you call on? Burnett gave us a good lesson. She didn't, we didn't talk about what I was preaching or what she was teaching but she said, come to church. And I'm here to tell you, this is a place we need to come to. And revival, if you look at what revival is, it's a return of God's presence to his people. We got revival starting Wednesday night. And I realize, you know, people's hearts are heavy. I also realize if Mike Brown was here this morning, you know what he'd be telling you? Get ready for revival. <laughs> You know what the most important thing for us to do is to get our lives in order that we can finish well like he finished well this week. I'm gonna tell you. So revival is the return of God's presence to his people. It's not just some concept. Listen to me. This isn't just some concept that we're talking about. You know what that we have experienced here this morning? It's the spirit of God. It's the Holy Spirit that's been here. Brother Jeff didn't do at all that that song he sang was Mike's favorite song. That's the song. His goodness is running after me. He's been, that's been the song that's got him through the last couple years. And he was the first one to his feet with his hands in the air whenever Shelly would sing that song and, or whoever, whenever he'd come on the radio. Mary walked in the room one day and he was standing up with his hands in the air because he was listening so good gospel music and he was worshiping God. So let, let me tell you, it's not just some concept. It's not just a belief. It's not just some theological ideal I'm talking about here this morning. 
but revival is talking about having the Spirit of God to return in our lives. I'm not going to beat around the bush about this, but you know, I believe there are some people sitting here under the sound of my voice that you haven't experienced that maybe ever or maybe in a long time that you've experienced the Spirit of God in your life. Yes. Now, he's been here this morning. A lot of us have felt him and welcomed him in, but revival is a manifest presence of God in our life. I'm gonna tell you something. Many times a crisis comes in our life, it causes us to turn back to God. When we, we see time after time in the Bible where when bad things happen to people, they turn to God and return to God a lot of times. And we're gonna talk a little bit here in 2 Chronicles today. I'm gonna, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you wanna turn there. I'm gonna read uh, verse 12 right now, so I think I'm gonna read, but it says, Our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but listen to this. Our eyes are upon thee. There it is this morning. Our eyes are upon you. So we, when we don't know what to do, when we are in a crisis, when we're facing sickness, when we're facing death, when we're facing financial difficulty, and many of us may be this morning in here, but when you don't know what to do, let me tell you what to do. Let's get our eyes on him this morning and turn to God. Back in verse three, Jehoshaphat feared and he realized that he was powerless against his enemies. But even if he did have the power, he admitted, I don't know what to do. I can't tell you how many times I've been in that position. I'm in that position right now. I'm the pastor of this church. I'm supposed to be your spiritual leader. And there's some things I just don't know what to do about. We're facing, we've lost our deacons. We've got two men left that are our deacons. We had five. Now we're down to two. That's a big responsibility. That's a big gap to fill. That's a big, some big shoes to fill. But listen to me. Jehoshaphat feared. He was afraid. He was powerless. He didn't know what to do. So in verse three, listen to what he said. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim to fast throughout all of Judah. And verse four said, they all come out to seek the Lord. If I could get us this morning to do anything as a church, I would love for us to come out and seek the Lord this week for our services, for this church, for your pastor, for your family, for your own life. We need to seek him this week. Throughout all of Judah, they came and sought the Lord. Amen. Sometimes God allows a crisis to bring us back to him. And when we get desperate enough and don't know what to do, We'll turn to God, or we sure better turn to God. I've had people make remarks. Well, they just done this or that because they got themselves in a mess. Aren't you thankful yes. that when we get ourselves in a mess, where else would you go? Who else would you turn to but to turn back to God when you get in that shape? I'm thankful that we have a God that will take us. He loves you and I so much. He's not going to turn you away if you come back to him, but he's going to welcome you this morning with open arms. Thank God. I'm glad we got a God like that. He's not just our God in theory, but he's my rock. He's my shield. You know, the one prophet said he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. I'm glad that we got somebody this morning that we can turn to. We know all the religious jargon. We know all the right things to say, but the main thing is, do you have a relationship with him this morning and know him this morning as your personal savior? We can have rituals and we do have. Burnett talked about some of our things this morning. There's some things we do that are tradition that we do. They're just uh, spiritual traditions, whatever you want to call them. But our church services, I can pretty much tell you about what's going to happen. But then when the Holy Spirit shows up, it changes everything. Sometimes he changes our messages. When we think, sometimes we end up not preaching when the Holy Spirit shows up. 
And so we need him and experience with God more than anything. Back in verse five here in that chapter 20, he said he went to the house of the Lord. Do you know where to go in a crisis? <laughs> when your family's in crisis, when you're facing battles, when you're facing loss, whatever you're facing in your life today, the enemy will try his best to get you to lay out of church. That is not the time to lay out of church and to try to stay away from the people of God and the presence of God, but that's when we need to run to the church and try to make sure we're here. You know what? They say, I've heard people say, well, no, I'm, I'm a Christian and I can live a Christian life and not go to church. I seriously doubt it. There's a few people who might, but I'm gonna tell you, most of you are not gonna make it if you start doing that, laying out of church and you think that you can make it on your own, you're not gonna do it. God has a plan. He put this thing, he said to forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Well, why would that be? And even more when you see that day coming and then we're at that day right now. If you don't believe we're ending into living in the end times, you got your head in the sand somewhere. So God doesn't need, listen to this. They went to the house of the Lord. Then in verse six, he started telling God, art thou not God in heaven? And rulest thou not over kingdoms of the heathen? And in the land is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Now God really doesn't need me and you to remind him who he is. He didn't need Jehoshaphat to remind him of who he was. God knows who he is. But many times we need to remind ourselves who God is. Because the enemy will put doubt in your mind. He'll have you doubting the very thing that you need to be running to today. But we understand who God is. And your crisis, listen to me, God is all powerful, God rules, he's in control, and your crisis does not have power, does not have the last word over your situation. God does. You're seeking for answers today, some of you young people. It's a tough time of life when you get to the end of your high school years and you trying to make a career choice or decide where you're going to go. Some of you may be dating somebody and you're trying to decide, you know, if you're going to get married or who you're going to marry or when you're going to get married and all those things. And they are big choices we made in our life. But let me tell you this, you take God with you. He's the one in control today. Your crisis don't have the last word God does. Jehoshaphat was not going here on what he feels because he was afraid. <laughs> you hear me? If you go on what you feel, your feelings are deceitful a lot of times. He was afraid, but he was going back to what he knew, not to what he felt, but he was going back to what he knew. I never forget Brother Deb, our pastor here for many, many, many years. And he was my spiritual, really, mentor. He's the one I heard his messages. I heard him preach for years. I saw how he depended on God and he would get up here and he'd wait on, he said, I'm waiting on the preacher to come. And he waited on the spirit to fall before he would try to deliver a message. But Brother Deb in his last days couldn't feel the Lord. We went to visit him. Me and Mark and Debbie and Burnett, all of us went, to, I believe, to visit him at his house. And Brother Deb was sitting there on the couch and he said, he had tears in his eyes. He said, I just can't, can't feel the Lord. And the enemy was coming and fighting him on his, in his dying days, the enemy was there. I'm gonna tell you something. He does not care about you. He will not show you no mercy. It don't matter what kind of shape you may be in, the enemy will be right there fighting you to the very last minute, to the very last breath. He'll be there trying to talk in your ear if you'll allow him to. Brother Deb said, I can't feel him. Mark said, well, tell me some things you know. So Brother Deb began to tell him some things he knew, some things from the scripture. He told him a time that he came and gave his life to the Lord and how God changed him from the old drunkard he was and made him a new man. And when he began to start telling the things that he knew, I seen him put his hand up and he started doing this. <laughs> He was reaching for him. He said, I can feel him now. I can feel him. You start, you got to go back to the things you know today in your life. Don't let the enemy tell you lies. 
tell you that there's no use or what's the use of serving him? Why does bad things happen to good people that serve God? I don't have all the answers for you, but I know this. I know God is in control today. And he does not, the crisis does not have power over us. We got to let our faith override our feelings. Now don't deny how you feel. Let me tell you something. He was afraid. He said, I'm afraid. If you're depressed, you don't need to hide it. You don't need to try to lie to yourself or anyone else or to God about it this morning, but we need just to admit it. I'm not telling you to pretend like it's not there. But let me tell you this, if you're insecure to say, I'm, I'm just insecure. Don't lie to yourself, don't lie to God. But Jehoshaphat goes back to what he knows. Art thou not, verse seven says, art thou not our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. When I read my Bible, I find out that God dealt with whole nations and whole groups of people. He drove out the enemy before the children of Israel and he brought Abraham into the end of the land. He made some promises to Abraham and what did he do? He kept every one of his promises. He drove out the inhabitants. That's why the word of God is important to us today. We need the word of God. You can look back in the word and realize while your situation may be different, your God is not different. <laughs> My situation may not be like the children of Israel. It may be something totally different, but let me tell you this. My God is not different. He is the same God that brought them through, the same God that brought them the victory, is the same God I'm serving right now, Doug, and I can trust him with my life today. The word of God's important. If he done it for them, he'll do it for you. So he remembers. God is sovereign. You've done it before. Now, this wasn't God's first rodeo. <laughs> it wasn't God's test case that he was going through. No matter what you're going through today, you may feel like you're the only one. You're not the first one, I'll guarantee you, to be there. You're not the first one to go through what you're going through today. I know, look, if you look, if you're in a financial crisis, let me tell you what you do. You go back to the word of God and you look at the widow at Zarephath. I mean, she was gonna bake her last little cake for her and her son, and, and that was it. They were going to die. Yeah. Yeah. But what happened? The prophet of God came and said, you make me one first, and she did. And the barrel, barrel of meal never failed. The cruise, a little cruise of oil never failed. But they had what they needed to sustain them right up until the end. I'm telling you this. If you're in a crisis, you can look at them in a financial crisis. Look at Moses in Israel. They were trapped between Pharaoh and the Red Sea. Now that's pretty gloom. If you look at where they were at and the mountains around behind them, they couldn't, there wasn't no way they could go back up the cliffs. That was over. They came around, they got down to the Red Sea and Pharaoh was behind them, the Red Sea in front of them. What were they gonna do? Women and kids, how are they gonna get them across there? God parted the sea. Now whether you believe that or not, I, I believe that 100%. I don't think that, the, that it just happened to be a drought season and the creek was low. One guy said, well, what are you shouting about when this woman was shouting? He said, that water was only ankle deep water and they walked across there. That's not what the Bible says. But the woman, she really shouted in. He said, well, I just told you that it was neat, uh, ankle deep water. What are you shouting about now? She said, I'm shouting, he drowned at all the enemy then in ankle deep water. That was a greater miracle than walking across on dry land. Thank the Lord. I'll tell you, I mentioned this the other day, it takes a whole lot more faith to be an atheist than it does just to believe the word of God. It takes a whole lot more faith to believe the Big Bang Theory than it does to believe that God created the heavens and the earth. And I'm gonna believe him and trust him today. Verse eight says, who built you a sanctuary and put your name on it saying, listen in verse nine, if evil come on us as the sword or judgment or pestilence or famine or financial needs or whatever it is, we stand before this house 
and in thy presence and cry unto thee in our affliction. Right there is your example. We build a house and put his name on it. This is the house of God. Now I realize you can pray wherever you're at. You can get saved anywhere you're at, but there's no greater place to come and stand before the Lord and cry to him than in the house that's got his name on it. And that's where we're at this morning. We're in the house of God. Now, he said, after he told God all this, Jehoshaphat reminded God who he was and God, you're sovereign. You've done it before. We built a house with your name on it. You made a covenant with Abraham. You know, you've kept your word all this time. But here's my problem now in verse 10. They're surrounding us and I'm powerless. Verse 12 says, I don't know what to do. So here it is. But our eyes are upon thee. You know what he done? He changed what he's looking at. The enemy this morning has got you looking at the problem. You may be considering giving your life to Jesus. And you say, I can't live that Christian life. I can't be like those people there are. The enemy's telling you all kind of things in your ear. But let me tell you this. You need to quit looking at the problem. You know what? When Jesus Christ come walking on the sea out to his disciples where they were, some of them were scared. They thought that he was a ghost. But Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And you know what Jesus said? Come. And Peter stepped out in faith, looking to Jesus. He seen him and he walked toward him. And as long as Jesus, as long as Peter kept his eyes on Jesus, he was fine. But when he started looking at the waves around him, he began to sink. You hear me? He was walking on the water just like Jesus was until he started looking at the problem. We're going to have to change our focus this morning. The enemy will want to keep you focused on the problem. He's going to want to keep you focused on all the turbulence going on around you. But you need to get your eyes on Jesus this morning and keep your eyes on him. And if you'll do that, focus on him and not on the problem, I'll guarantee you he'll bring you victory today. So all were standing before the Lord. I love this. The wives, the kids, all of Israel <coughs> was standing before the Lord in verse 13 there of chapter 20. He said, hearken ye, now listen to this. Verse 14 says, the spirit of the Lord came upon the prophet and he said, hearken ye all Judah and King Jehoshaphat, be not afraid or dismayed by the reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, it's God's. Verse 17, he said, ye shall not need to fight in this battle, but set, but set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. The very same thing he told Moses when they got to the Red Sea. Stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. Our problem is we're so busy trying to fight this battle on our own. We're so busy trying to do it ourselves. We need to just stop a minute today and stand still and look to him and let him fight the battle for us. I'm gonna tell you, verse 20 said, they rose up early and they went forth. So they were going on, they were gonna march. Jehoshaphat said, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And what happened? Verse 21 said, he appointed singers unto the Lord. That they, should have, that they should praise in the beauty of holiness. Well, that's some way to fight a battle. Now I'm gonna give you the battle plan. You wanna fight the battle? They had singers to praise God in the beauty of holiness. Whenever we start lifting him up, he'll fight the battle for us. But we're gonna have to send up some praise toward him. We had singers this morning singing for us to lift up the name of Jesus today. And when they begin to sing and praise the Lord, the Bible said the Lord set ambushments. In other words, the enemies begin to fight amongst themselves and they killed each other. And what happened when Jehoshaphat and the Israelites got there? They, the battle was over. They had killed each other. It took them three days to just pick up the spoils from the battle and they didn't lift a hand to fight. But God brought them to victory. The fourth day said, here's what I love. It said on the fourth day, they returned to Jerusalem with joy. 
We might be in a crisis right now. And let's pray, Lord, you bring us back to you today. We, we got revival coming starting Wednesday night. And I'm, I'm praying, Lord, you revive us again. We need it here in Beach Fork. You know, you want to win the battle, you start by remembering who God is. He's sovereign this morning. Remember history, what he's done in the past for you. We look to his word. We praise him to the victory. And then here's another thing. I'm going to tell you something. We've got football players. We've got some coaches. We've got a lot of football fans. When they hike the ball to the quarterback, where's the focus of the enemy? (laughs) Yeah, buddy, they're going after the quarterback. They're rushing, trying to get to that quarterback. Do you know what happens when the quarterback hands the ball off to the running back? Where's the focus go then? Now the focus is on the running back and everybody's after him. You know what the problem is with us? We're trying to hold on to the ball when we need to hand it off to him this morning. If you're trying to carry it on your own, the enemy's focused on you. But I'm here to promise you this. Let's hand the ball off to Jesus Christ this morning. Let's let's give him the ball this morning and let him carry it for us. Let the focus be on him and not on you this morning. And if you'll do that, I'll guarantee you, He'll help you through whatever kind of crisis you may be in in your life today. Let's stand to our feet, if you would, with me. I gave you exactly what the Lord's laid on my heart this morning. I didn't expect shouting and hooping and hollering. A lot of people's hurting here this morning. I've hurt with you. I've lost my Lifelong best friend. (laughs) I'll just put it out there. I don't have a lot of close friends. I mean, I consider you all my friends. I love you all, and I believe if I called on you, but I'm talking about somebody that we we discussed things that we didn't discuss with anybody else between me and him. My brother-in-law, Danny, was another one. I lost him a few years back. My close circle of friends is getting smaller, but boy, they're getting bigger over there. (laughs) I want to make it to that city, and you can too today. Jeff, would you come and play something this morning? Amen. I'm going to have, go go, go ahead, come on, Jeff. I'll have Jeff come on up and sing a song. If he's got a song of invitation, come on up here and sing us a song of invitation this morning. Amen. So he's getting ready. If you are here today, I don't know what you may be going through. I mean, I know there's people here going through grief and going through a lot of things. I get all that. And I know that uh, it may be overwhelming. But I'm telling you this. We need to hand it off to him. Let's hand the ball off to him today. Would you do that? As he sings this morning, if God spoke to you, if you got a need, would you come out? I'll guarantee you there'll be somebody here to pray with you. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Do you ever find yourself asking God where he's been? Ever get up out of bed Saying, I can't do this again Have you ever been afraid What tomorrow's gonna bring And you're facing it alone At least that's what you think I can tell you after going through that valley Even though I couldn't see it at the time It was in my weakest moments that he held me And I know you'll find He will carry you when you can't go on He'll be your strength when your strength is gone He will lift you up He will be enough To get you through 
When the road is long and you want to quit Cause you think you've got nothing left to give You can fall apart, fall into his arms He will carry you When you get the kind of news That you hoped you'd never hear When you're chasing down a dream Just to watch it disappear When somebody that you love Turns and walks away And they leave you standing there With shattered faith you don't have to pick up all the broken pieces You don't have to try to cover up the scars You are loved and you can always run to Jesus Just as you are He will carry you when you can't go on He'll be your strength when your strength is gone He will lift you up He will be enough To get you through when the road is long and you want to quit Cause you think you've got nothing left to give You can fall apart, fall into his arms He will carry you His heart is never weary No, he's never tired Through the toughest fight, through the longest night through the flood and through the fire He will carry you when you can't go on He'll be your strength when your strength is gone He will lift you up, He will be enough To get you through When the road is long and you want to quit Cause you think you've got nothing left to give You can fall apart Fall into his arms He will carry you He will carry you Amen I just uh, feel like I hate to I hate to leave this morning because I feel like that there's people here that I I don't know why uh, we act like we're afraid of the altar and uh, there's no virtue in the altar I've made that statement many times there's not but boy it's a great place to come and kneel and before God and to meet with him and you'll never find a better place uh, First step's the hardest one. Once you step out, it's always it gets easier. I'll promise you that. But, Amen. We just appreciate you all being here today. I uh, can't tell you how much that I've appreciated my church this week and all your prayers for Mike's family and for my family. And uh, we felt the prayers and appreciate you doing that for us. Uh, continue to hold Mary up. She's going to need it through the days. And uh, I think that you all realize that. I know we've been praying for her and been praying for Karen. Uh, we've had some loss in this church, but we also have had some gains. And we thank God for that. And we're just glad to see you. If you some of you are visiting here, some of you for the first time, or some of you have been here a time or two. But you're to uh, come back tonight. Brother uh, Doug's on schedule tonight. And the Satterfield boys will be singing. And uh, Tate Reed, I believe, singing tonight. So come back tonight. Be with us in that service. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you at 7 tonight.